And before we get to the grease, we do want to talk about something else. Guys, we have a star amongst us, a literary glitterati, glitterati amongst us. And I just want to quickly, and I'm not saying it to be funny, um, Norman is a writer. And I just want to highlight, so Norman sent us this. Um, okay, yeah, y'all can see this. This is a so Norman's gonna tell us about this website. I had no idea about this website, and I love writing. I as for catharsis, I, I just really love it. I always I've always written, never to publish, just writing to be writing. And um, so here's Norman, and he he's okay with us showing his face. Well, he's he, he is bigger than life on this website, <laughs> but here's Norman, and he wrote this story, The Death of Retta Brown. And I'm gonna stop talking, but guys. If you love, and Norman, you could correct me if I'm wrong, say, no, you know, that's not it. But if, if you love, so the first thing came to my mind was a little, little murder she wrote, a little British, mis, you know, British, the British just did mysteries just fabulously. Um, and comedy, just snarky, we're saying snarky, and I'm leaving the whole stuff out. You have to read this story. So I'm going to stop talking. Please, Norman, tell us about your process. Tell us about this website, your process. This was this this was such a fun read. Oh, I'm really glad. Um, yeah, so uh, I've been writing for a really long time. Um, for many years, I published a number of like what they call creative nonfiction, sort of like uh, events that you know were mostly part of my life, but maybe you know changed around a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a, a number of short stories published for you know, doing that. And um, so I kind of ran across a number of literary journals. There's quite a few. Um, so people who are interested in publishing, um, there's, there's, you know, I would suggest the Poets and Writers um, website. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's a, it's a, um, a, quite a list of publishers that are accepting, you know, any kind of like poetry, any kind of literary output that you might have. Um, I encourage everybody to try to publish. It's just a fun thing to do. Um, you might get rejected. You probably will get rejected. And, you know, that's, that is part of the process. You just keep on going and keep on working and, you know, workshop and, you know, take classes or whatever. To, you know, I suggest getting into a community of writers to do that really helps. Uh, but this particular story is a change of venue for me. I've, I've, been, I've, I've been excited about changing into just fiction because I think it's just more creative and more fun. Um, and so I've got these two characters. They're older gentlemen. They're, they've been friends for a really long time. And, you know, they're contemplating retirement and what to do with their life. And all of a sudden, people start dropping dead all around them. And they find themselves, you know, sort of, trying to solve murders, not very efficiently, but they, they have fun doing it. And, and um, I really got a kick out of this story. I, I got a kick out of writing this. It was a lot of fun to write. So I'm glad that it was a lot of fun to read. Um, this will be one of a series I'm working on. So I'm expecting to do three. Um, and I want to send, you know, publish those together as a collection. So I'm working on the other two currently. And are you going to keep the same gentleman, like, is it is it different characters, and they eventually all uh, converge on each other, or, or is it the same guys? Or what's yeah, no, no. For me, the story, like the murder, is just like a MacGuffin. The real story is the story about the two friends. Okay. Um, and so they're the they're the they're they will be in every story. The other cast of characters may, might change, but these two friends, you know, and the nature of their friendship and the strength of their friendship, that to me is the, the most important part of the story. And I and so George and I kept saying Norman is a word painter, a wordsmith, and because you can see every character, I just he just so just and without just bombarding you with adjectives and and metaphors or whatever, and, and you know what I mean. It wasn't too heavy, but you know, it sounds cliche, but they really did leap off the electronic page of you and come, come to life. We could really, we didn't, we, we couldn't. I don't know about you, Georgia. I was I couldn't stand Runner Brown. <laughs> he made me not. I don't even. You know, this is, is a total fictional person. But I wanted to ring her freaking. So I'd have been in line. I'd have been a suspect. Let's just go with that. <laughs> I thought those characters are so magnificently drawn, and I could just see them so clearly. Which, and I have trouble doing that with other mysteries that I read, but didn't have that problem with these. And so I found myself stealing moments out of my day to try and get right back into your story. I didn't want to have to put it down. I loved it so much. It was so, Moya said it so well. It is a fun 
read. You will be just drawn in to it and just get and there. I love your sense of humor, the wit that you have in there. I just thought, wow, this is just, I, I, I felt this is just as good as anything I ever read in any other kind of mystery. Every bit that good. And I loved it. And I just want to encourage you to keep on writing. I mean, you really shine in these stories. Yes. Well, I hope you like the next two coming up. So uh, I'll tell you when they're, when they're ready, I will send them along to you. Perfect. And so this is the website, guys. So um, you can see as I was scrolling, look, look, they have every genre here. And how, how for those people who are aspiring, um, how, what's the process of getting published on this website? So everyone, so what I like about poets and writers is like it's a it's a, almost an inexhaustive list. You can filter it, you know, if you're into humor or mystery or you know LGBT or you know, feminist or whatever your niche is, you know, poetry, whatever. You can filter down the list, and it'll it'll refine the list of the places that are accepting the kind of things that you're working on, and, and they have guidelines. They'll tell you like we want it in twelve point font, we want it in New Times Roman, we want it. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, they will tell you exactly like what their qualifications are and you just you know you just if you pay attention to directions and you, you submit your, your piece the way that they want it to um at least you won't get rejected out of hand um <laughs> because they're really picky i've been an editor in a magazine and if, if people just don't follow the basic directions mm -hmm. you're out so just, just follow the directions each magazine will have its own directions public you know send them to anybody you want as many times as you want it's like playing the lottery and it's it's a lot of fun once you get into the groove of it I, I have so much fun with that and you get to meet editors you get to meet people um you, you develop a, a a network with your time wow that sounds so much fun they don't pay a dime so mm -hmm. you're not going to get rich <laughs> <laughs> yeah so because that was that was going to be my next question i'm glad you brought that up um but just an honor to be published and yeah okay. that's what they try to tell you <laughs> <laughs> well i i look you know i'm ignorant I, I don't know about george i'm ignorant to the whole thing so like i said this is all so fascinating to me um I, but no but your work i i i assume because i only looked had a chance to look at your work and i said i was going to go back and check out so and i'm i'm just a really picky reader I, I, it has to be quality i can't because my mind I'm always trying to guess what's going to happen next. It could, it could be a mystery. It could be a romance. I don't care. So if it's predictable, I am out. But I could not. Georgia, could you predict what was going to happen in this story? Oh, no. No. Right. 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 And he didn't take a, you on a wild goose chase. It wasn't a lot of, like, say, MacGuffins and wild goose. Red oh, herrings. Red, red <laughs> herrings. Thank you. Red herrings. It, it was, when you finish, you like, Dang, going well. I, it, like it was right there. That's how I felt, George. Like it was that the the mystery solve, whatever. You know, that like on school you do pulling the mask off. Was, oh my gosh! Like how did I not see that? Because my brain is always working. I know what it is. <laughs> I did. I had not a clue who it was. So you will be thoroughly impressed. And it's just an honor to have you um, on here, Norman, to talk about this. So guys who are listening on the screen um, is writing this is writing disorder .com. And um, I, I was on a page about submission. So, you, you know, go to that. And if you don't have it, I'll put the link in and um, somewhere on our description box on our uh, YouTube page. But yeah, so I put a link to Mormon's story, uh, obviously. And then you can, when you go to the page, you'll see at the top um, the different menus and they have submit, donate, blah, blah, blah. But, um, thank you. And thank you, Norm, for sharing the story with us and the criteria and what you said was so uh, true. You know, follow the directions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're very specific. Each one is very, very specific. I just want to wrap up with, um, yeah, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Little Women. And the character of Joe was a writer and she submitted a story and she got paid, you know, $100 for her story. And a hundred and something years later, you're lucky if you get a hundred dollars for a story. <laughs> it's like writers, writers are still getting paid like what they were getting paid in the 1860s. So there's no that. way. <laughs> yeah, my way. What? Yeah. So I know. How do you make it? I don't. And I gotta get off of this. But how do you make it big, as they say, especially in today's digital world, because people self-publish and what have you? Yeah. How do you yeah. Make it big? I have no, no idea. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm having fun. I'm having fun. You know, if eventually, you know, if I get this collection going and I can peddle it to an agent, you know, once I get there, I will let you know how I did it. But. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, hilarious. So, guys, um, I'll put the links, like I said, somewhere on our Facebook and YouTube page. And please go and read Norman's stories. Hit us up. Um, and let us know what you think. Let let Norman know what you think. He's on the Ultimate Fashion History's um uh, Facebook page, and he also also has his own page about fashion. So, um, you know, just do a search for him, and you can obviously get in touch with him. So.